Hello everyone. So today I'll show you how to do this quick, I'm gonna do like a quick tip to how to box fillize basically your images and, and, and get kind of like a box fillize effect uh, as you can see in this quick render that I did right here. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's get started. All right, so uh, let's get started. So what I did is uh, I brought like a geo with a texture uh, from uh, actually the content browser. If you go here, we have this modeling people and then they come with textures. So let's grab her. I'm gonna import. So you can see the whole process real quick here. Uh, I'm gonna make it smaller, it's way too big. So I'm gonna say 0.1 and there you go. I'm gonna isolate her. And uh, there is two things that you need to make sure. Uh, well, I mean, this works with textures or color, but I'm showing you with textures now if you have a texture, a diffuse. So what I need to do uh, is basically grab here uh, the, the diffuse, right? The, and I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna grab again this guy here. I'm gonna grab the diffuse. So if I go here, it's gonna be right there. So control A just to open the attribute editor and then I'm gonna control A that, control C to copy that. Cool, I have that texture right there. So now if I go into the mesh displays and then I'm going to the color set editor, we don't have a color vector here. So we need that in order to import that color into Bifrost. Uh, and for that, what we can do is just uh, mesh display again and then go into the paint vertex color tool. I'm gonna go into the options. I'm gonna go into the Adrio uh, maps, import, import that texture, paste that here, and that's it. So now when I have that, now that texture is, is gonna be our color vector. So if you check now again, the color set editor, now we have a color set one. Uh, so if I bring her now back uh, into Bifrost, right here, and let's not de-isolate. Now, if I change just the uh, hair, or uh, if I just swap them, right? Now we're gonna see an updated voxelization of hair now. So let's keep going with hair, I'm gonna hide him. Uh, and the, the thing that I did here is basically I grabbed that color set property, right? Which is coming as a vector four by default, by the way, or most of the time you can change that to come as a vector three, but usually comes as a vector four. Just make sure, just press W here and then make sure that you're reading the correct data type. So if you go into the color set one here, make sure that this is gonna be, if you look at down below, it's gonna say math floor three. You can change the data type right here too, if you right click you can check what kind of data, data type you're reading. Then I'm converting this into a vector three and then I'm setting this point color property into the geo, right? Uh, I'm gonna disconnect this input uh, here because this was just, I was animating this as you saw at the beginning on the video. Um, uh, on the mesh to volume, I'm basically converting this into a uh, SDF, a level set. No, remember by default it's a Fox, so you need to make sure that you have a level set here. I mean, uh, and then uh, I'm just doing a shell instead of a solid. That's gonna save you a few voxels there. And it's gonna be a little bit faster. And then also instead of uh, relative, uh, I'm doing a uh, world space, absolute. Instead of the uh, relative bounding, bo bounding box, and then remember absolute is world space units. So that is what I'm using right here. You can use either or, and this is gonna just give you a more accurate uh, right of the box, uh, accurate representation of your match. Uh, and then really the hack is on the volume scope. Uh, if I throw new, a new volume scope here, volume scope, and we look at it, and just wanna change this, just pay attention to the visualization here. It's gonna change slightly, but you can see that that when uh, it make these things a little bit smaller. I'm gonna go again here. And the thing that is happening is that inside this volume scope, you have to edit that so we can change what is inside. Uh, again, remember, this is the old one. I mean, I'm sorry, the new one. Um, uh, what it's doing, uh, this is the main node, the generate tile three geo. And if I go inside that, press A. Uh, I also change the, uh, the transparency, but you don't need that. It's just, just for visualization and then this is the other guy, the volume tile three points. And basically here, 
if you go here, this is in the point size, this guy here. And by default, the point size, well, it's doing something else here, right? If I press L here, now just to graph that a little bit nicer uh, to lay out this node. I uh, doing some subtraction and multiplication, but by default, this is 0.5, and I'll show you why this is not gonna work for our test. So if I just keep that as a default without, let's say that I didn't even edit this, and then I go into my instances here, and actually, let me just uh, go back and then uh, connect this here. We, we won't see any color. As you can see now, this is just I'm instancing a cube with the default size here of one. If I leave this as a 0.5, then it won't match what we see actually by default on the volume scope. So if I connect this here now, and we look at this, you can see that this looks very different. This looks like, oh yeah, I mean, our cubes are kind of like matching here and all that, but on the, uh, let me just turn off transparency, transparency, I think, yeah. So if I do one here, and yeah, I can change the color, I change it inside, but you can see, hopefully you can see, uh, that this is actually kind of matching, but when I do an instance, it doesn't. And this is because of this guy, 0.5. As soon as I do this to one, then we're gonna have the right visualization as well on our uh, voxelized art here, or mesh, right? Um, so just that is the only hack that you need to do. Then you can change the color and all that, it's up to you. Uh, but uh, the main thing is gonna be here on this tile side that is setting the point size. So just make sure that this is one. Um, other than that, really, it's just, um, I, I just, just to prove a point, I'm gonna keep this. Uh, the one that we grabbed then, I'm getting from array. Uh, and then to get the color into this, because if I render, right, you will say, well, don't we have a point color already there? Uh, and there's a point color, right? And then I'm trying to set up. So let me just actually even, I'm not gonna use this point color. And uh, let me hide here because this slowed down a little bit the render. So if I hit render, oops, and that is a little preview that I was uh, showing before. And now you have the lights on. You will see that the color is actually coming from that uh, scope that you saw before, the point color, which is red. But we don't want that. We want the, actually the, our, right? We want the uh, the color from the color set. So for that, in order for that to work, what I'm doing is just sampling the color with the get closest location. So we are grabbing our original geo, right? And then uh, uh, I'm getting the positions from the, our, the, from the tiles getting the closest location from the mesh, position from the tiles, and then I'm sampling this uh, point color from the original geo again and setting it into our uh, instances here. And then that's why in the point scope I have this here so we can see it uh, and we can see a, uh, a quick representation of how this is gonna look like. Uh, I have quads with cubes, you might see a little bit something, but it doesn't really change, so it doesn't really matter what you have here. And then just, uh, this was just because by default also this is 0.5. So I just grab the original point size coming from the tiles. Uh, and then I just get from array because we just need one value here in order to this to work. Um, but that, this is not needed again. This is just me doing stuff. And then I just transform the points so we can see it side to side, both of them. Uh, and that's it. And then I assign materials. Uh, I'm using the standard surface, and then in the set geo property reference, basically we're calling that property that we set here, right? And then applying it to the base color of the standard surface, as you can see here. So base color uh, is the material property, and the geo property is the uh, point color. And when I do that now, basically we're gonna get the color, and I'm just turning that off so we can uh, preview a little bit quicker what we see here. And as you can see now, we have hair as a voxelized option. And let me just render both of them so you can see and render both of them at the same time. And now as you can see, we have the hair in, in the Maya, and then we have the voxelization of, from Bifrost. And then obviously we can play with the uh, detail size here, right? With the resolution, if you want to do something more coarse, we can go to 0.5.
or 0.1 to make it really, really coarse, but the color is still gonna be sampling, uh, uh, which is pretty cool. So now it really is up to you how you wanna play with it. Um, anyhow, that was a little tip, quick tip here. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be doing these quick uh, things here uh, more often, just to share quick tips here and there, and hopefully they're helpful to you. Um, so until next times, cheers. <laughs>